Hello and welcome to the Charles Cook Podcast. The focus of this podcast is state and local issues here in the state of Tennessee. You can follow my podcast on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, and Alexa. Just search for the Charles Cook Podcast. You can also uh, follow and subscribe on any of those platforms and you'll be notified when I upload new content. The best place to find those links is on my podcast webpage at charlescookpodcast.buzzsprout.com. And you can email me at charlescookpodcast at gmail.com. Today, uh, I have a return guest. is Kurt Riley. He's from the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans. And um, I've brought him back on because they they're doing some good work down there and, and uh, uh getting noticed and yeah. so i wanted to bring him on and talk about an article that uh, i don't know if y'all will be able to see this good but it was an article about uh, their group and the folks that they've got elected in sumner county uh, that uh, was picking up by the ap press and so the associated press and uh, I read part, uh, read it, and I seen it online, and I said, "Hey, I got to get a hold of Kurt and talk to these guys." Kurt, welcome back, and tell us what's going on down there. Yeah, Charles, thank you again for having me back on the show. It's it's always great to be here and talk to fellow patriots about everything that's going on in our in our county and our state. Uh, yeah, here in here in Sumner County, we're continuing to shake things up. You know, the goal of what we're trying to do here is to recruit, train, and educate and help, you know, people that are God-fearing constitutional conservative Republicans run for local public office. And that's been our focus now for five years. We've been doing that. Um, we've, we've entered into or endorsed 41 people um, in races over that time period. And out of the 41 races, we've won 31. So we're about a 75% win rate. And we're having some success. And as you know, when you have success, you get a little spotlight on you. And the Associated Press, along with some detractors, we think, got together and thought they were going to write an article and and sort of maybe put us in a bad light. Uh, we we kind of think that backfired. We're actually pretty happy with how the article uh, turned out. But it's uh, generating a lot of buzz, uh, not only here in Tennessee and in our county, but statewide and nationwide. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, the activist side of, uh, uh, of me, I see this and I look at it and I'm like, okay, they're, they're, they're getting some things done down there and they're getting some attention. High five, you know, yeah, good job. And so, but I, I read part of the article. Well, I read the whole article and, um, uh, you know, what, um, some of the things that stood out in the article, it says when, it, uh, when it was important, uh, it was an important moment when 14 commissioners who had campaigned under the banner of the Sumner County Constitutional Republicans, a group uh, had waged a political war on uh, fellow Republicans they viewed as insignificantly conservative uh, in, in this fast growing region of North Nashville during a bitter primary a few months ago. A political war, you know, the they like to use those uh, words to, uh, you know, draw interest to it. Absolutely. You know? And uh, so, but I guess you can call it a political war, but I guess it's just standing up for you, what you believe in and running on what you're doing. And then, then uh, you know, that novel concept when you get elected to office that you actually do what you campaign on doing. Yeah. And the the interesting thing about that article, Charles, is that I was just trying to find it on my phone, but I had a screenshot of it. They changed the headline. The headline basically started out as conservatives take over the county commission. And they changed it to they're opposed to government, but now they are the government. One county's hard right shift. That's a change from what they originally put out there, which is – you know, at first we were like, yeah, we did. The conservatives took over. And I, I think somebody who read the article complained to the AP and said, no, we don't we don't want you to say that because that is the truth. But so, you know, 
I, I wasn't happy that they changed the headlines, but that's that's just what they do. Yeah. And and the one that I have here, it says uh, uh, the headline from the AP says tensions uh, in heavily GLP Tennessee County after conservatives take over reflect a uh, wilder uh, battle over elections. So, yeah. you know, but it, it just, you know, really caught my attention. And then that you see some of these other people that have been on the commission for a while, of course, you knew that y'all was going to have to deal with these guys. I mean, uh, the people that were elected that they were going to have to go in there and deal with these guys. And when they're used to the status quo, they don't want the change, you know? Yeah. Well, and these new commissioners, you know, they come into this place and they, they, they're going to govern from a very conservative standpoint. And you've got departments within government who aren't used to being told no, right? right. They want, they want money, they want space, whatever it is they want more employees. Um, and when you've got a constitutional mindset, a conservative mindset, and you want to work within a budget, um, these folks, they, they're not used to that. You know, many, many times I'm being told by our governing officials when I say, hey, how's everything going? What's going on? They, they always tell me, Kurt, these people aren't used to being told no. They want something, you know, they borrow the money and they get it. And right. now that there's a new sheriff in town, the SCCRA, or I'm sorry, SCCR, that's uh, Sumner County Constitutional Republicans and the people that we've got elected, I mean, they're leading the way you would want them to lead, right? They're counting pennies. They're looking for waste. It's not just you want something. It has to be justified, right? And there's people that don't like that. And they want to paint us as as some kind of, you know, anti-government group because, you know, we don't want to spend $8,000 on pencils or whatever, whatever the item is. So, you know, change, change is good. And sometimes change scares people. And uh, with that being that fear, you know, you get a little pushback, you get a little things that are said to kind of put you in a bad light, but we're ready for that fight. So, right. And to go along with that, here's another quote that I highlighted. Since taking control, that majority has halted pl uh, plans for a new building, rejected federal grants, and tried to give away a historical property. Actions, um, it said, were in line with its commitment to physical responsibility, protected property owners, and manage and grow. Yeah. You know, that, that goes along with what you just said there. There's yeah. some pushing that stuff through. Absolutely. You know, the old commission, they wanted to buy a private barn over here, not owned by government. They wanted to buy it and renovate it, but yet the property would still be owned by a private company. And they wanted to pour millions of dollars in taxpayer money into a property we didn't own. The new commission does the exact opposite. They take government property, right, that belong to the people and they give it back to the people, you know, in, in, in the form of, uh, you know, they got a 401, 501c3, uh, set up where they give some of this county historical property that the county wasn't going to do anything. Some of it's in a floodplain, you know, but it's going back to the people. We want to restore the property, the rights. You know, we one thing we're really big on is private property rights. One thing this commission uh, pushed through the legislature because of what happened here in Sumner County is they were stealing private property for greenways, mm -hmm. you know, so They'd be like, hey, we're going to run a greenway right down your backyard. And they're like, I don't want a greenway in my backyard. You know, so they 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 tried to do that stuff. And we ended up getting it passed because of the leadership of this commission to ban um, the stealing of greenway. Or I'm sorry, of private property just because you want a greenway in somebody's backyard. So we're moving and shaking, Charles. And that's good. That's hey, that's why the people uh, selected your group to represent right, yeah. you. County Commission because they're tired of it. Um, one of the one of the other things I've highlighted here goes along with what we're seeing in Washington D.C. and yeah. and uh, uh, in Nashville with our state government, and it's the Republicans, as I say with air quotes. I uh, guess some Republicans and county members say the commissioners are operating outside political norms inviting lawsuits and jeopardizing elections uh, 
in other county operations. So you have so-called Republicans here. I guess that's why y'all are called the constitutional Republicans. That's right. Republicans. I think this is probably the, another reason why, as as we learned in the previous interview that I did with you, that y'all separated from the Republican Party and had your own bylaws. Yeah, I mean, what we did is, you know, we felt like when we and we still go to the GOP meetings here, we tell everybody be involved in the GOP. We're not the GOP. But what we are is we are a collection of God fearing constitutional conservative patriot republicans that came together and said we really want to be republicans right not over here at the party where it's like they stand at the door and it's like hey will you vote republican yeah okay come on in right Mm -hmm. give us 50 bucks you're a republican you know our group goes through a full vetting process we have a vetting board we run background checks okay we've even hired private investigators we're trying to figure out who are the patriots Right. We're tired of smoke being blown up our butt and people telling us all the time that they're conservative, they're Republican, they're constitutional. Well, you know what? We're going to look into your life. We're going to look into your friends. We're going to look into your background and we're going to figure out where'd you come from? How'd you get here? What do you believe? What do you say? You know who your friends are. And we want to know for sure, because, you know, in the political world, people will tell you whatever you want to hear. So we've been really successful in in doing that and building a group of people that i think see the organization not only as you know another kind of sidecar to the gop but you know they they see it as family they're like these are my true patriot brothers that believe you know we don't all believe the same but you know we're we're 95 99% somewhere in there in terms of what we believe our our differences are very minor it's not enough to to separate us, right? We're not operating as Democrats pretending to be Republicans, which is very common in Sumner County. You can't win as a Democrat here, so you have to run as a Republican. So, and that's pretty much unless you live in one of the large municipal uh, cities here in in Tennessee. That's the way it is. You're not going to yeah. run as a Democrat and win, and unless you're in Knoxville, Chattanooga, uh, Nashville, or Memphis, um, and we we all know that and a lot of the the good old southern democrats and and stuff that's how they know okay i got to start voting republican then that way i can be a bona fide republican in the primaries and and run right. as a as a republican yeah so um uh, another thing here uh, one of the things i highlighted is what's happened here in Sumner County constitutional conservative republican group they don't believe in government said Baker Ring, a Republican who is uh, serving his fourth term on the county commission and is not aligned with the new majority. Uh, they oppose, They are opposed to government, but now they are government. Yeah, that's your typical rhino, right? right. Give you a response that's just crap, to be honest with you. We're not opposed to government. We're, we want limited government. That's the Republican Party. I wish Baker Ring, who claims to be a Republican, would follow the mantra of limited government. But every time Baker finds a chance to spend a dollar or borrow a dollar, he's right there for it, right? The the, the idea that we might want to cut spending because we're f- over $400 million in debt, you know, that's something that Baker doesn't quite understand, right? So that's the difference between Baker. Baker's got a credit card and he's ready to use it. And we're sitting here saying, no, we're not using the credit card and let's figure out how to get these balances down. That's the difference. Right. He's one of those rhinocrats that we're talking about. And, Dang right he is. And, uh, you know, and he's one of them that's, that's used to running and getting his way and doing what they want to do. And then now when he's got to sit and work with people and justify what he's trying to spend all this money and stuff on, then he wants to attack and talk yeah. about, it, you know. Well, so, they Charles, they've lost power, and when they right. lose power, they don't know how to get it back, and they struggle with, well, wait a second. We used to just spend like drunken sailors. Now it's like we've got a commission that's going to be scrutinizing every dollar that's spent. They don't like it, so they want to paint us as anti-government, which is typically what they do, but we know that's you know not true. So, Yeah, and well, what, what followed in the uh, 
few paragraphs after that uh, by uh, talking about Mr. Ring there was then they go into the whole Donald Trump lies of the 2020 presidential election and yeah. all this that and the ballot drop boxes and, and stuff and, you know, uh, election com- conspiracy theories and, and everything. Um, but here, here's, um, and I've followed some other groups around the country and some of the things that they're doing. And uh, there's a group up in Michigan that has caused a, a real stir too. And, yeah. uh, and it talks about groups like that are getting involved in these local governments. It's uh-huh. happening a lot throughout the country and people don't realize it. The school boards and stuff and everything, even in the state of Tennessee, it's happening. But this is uh, what they have to say about while their success at winning office has varied and the consequences of when they do are becoming apparent in places such as Sumner County where they can uh, wield power such as budgeting authority that could have implications for how elections are run and votes are tallied. So they're, they're trying to make it sound like that. um, Basically the reason why a lot of folks are getting involved is because they believe in the Donald Trump uh, election conspiracies. I I believe a lot of folks were getting involved at the local level long before Donald Trump got involved. Absolutely. I mean, people are getting involved because they're sick and tired of seeing like rogue school boards, you know, plant vulgar books for their eight year old kid to read about, you know, LGBT and critical race theory. And I think people are sick and tired of this, this woke agenda. And they're getting involved in not only their school board, but they're getting involved at the county commission races, the alderman races, right? They're getting appointed to library boards. I mean, I think you're seeing uh, uh, you know, a national recruiting of people to say, and, and one of my favorite lines is, you know, if you're not going to do it, who's going to do it, right? Because right. the Democrats will be like, we'll do it, you know, and then you'll be like, I don't get it. Why do we have this person? Well, because you won't do it. I mean, somebody has to stand up and and be, you know, if you're a conservative, constitutional, patriot type person, we need you on the school board. We need you, you know, on a library board, on the planning commission, right? All these these boards are important. And I think, you know, for years, we've kind of had this mindset as conservatives of like, you know, we sort of just want to be left alone. I'm going to go out and build a house in the woods and be left alone. And it's like I tell everybody, you know, every month in our meetings, You know, one of my famous sayings is that, you know, um, if if you don't take an interest in government, government will take an interest in you one way or another. So, yeah, they may be whatever you're doing right now, they may be leaving you alone right now, but sooner or later, they're not going to leave you alone. It's going to affect you. And, you know, so that's what a lot of people are waking up to. Yeah. And if you wake up and realize like, wait a second, who's my school board rep? And you find out it's some, you know, left wing woke nut, you know, you can't just get he or she off that board tomorrow. Right. It takes it takes, you know, depending on where we are in election cycle, you know, that sort of stuff. I mean, from the day you realize like this person's a serious radical left wing lunatic on my school board, how do we get rid of that person? It can take years yes. to get rid of them. So don't wait, get on it now because it, you know, it takes time. And the worst part is, is that's the school board member. If you yeah. got a, if you got a school director, it may take you eight years to be able to get enough votes on the school board to get rid of them. Right. How much damage can they do in eight years? A lot, a yeah. lot. Um, so uh, this is one of the things that one of the, another thing that I highlighted here because it, it even goes as far as the, uh, uh, you know, what we've seen with the uh, the budget deal here in Washington last week uh, with funding like the the eighty seven thousand IRS agents and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, here's a quote. If we don't fund it, you don't get to do it. One county commissioner, uh, Jeremy Mansfield, told the election administrator administrator, and the chair of the election commission um, 
that's the what that's the job of the county commission is is to to decide what they're going to fund and what what they're not they are the yeah. people's representatives and charles this is specifically goes to the election administrator or, or administrator of elections Lori ashley you know just wanting more than she's entitled to and the commission saying no we're not going to give you more space we're not going to give you more money and what you're going to see especially at sumner county is it mentions lawsuits you're going to see these lawsuits these lawsuits are coming because departments are not used to being told no and now you've got people like jeremy that says no we're a fiscally conservative group that's what we were elected to do that's what we ran on and we're here going line item by line item. And if it doesn't make sense, you're not getting it. And they're just, they're not used to that up here in Sumner County. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we hear all the time about local and state elections, about, well, voter apathy and people don't care. Well, people don't care because they, they're tired of going out and voting for people who will not do what they said they'd do. Give right. people something to vote for. And here's another thing. It says the county is dominated by Republicans and back Trump with 69% of the vote in 2020. So wouldn't it be great if uh, the people in the county that are Republicans who I view things as, as conservatives actually had representatives that was conservatives? And went out and voted the and and represented them the correct way. Yeah, I, I mean that's Charles. What I've said when you look at the voter data and you sit down and look at this data, you come to one conclusion: we've got a county full of true red blood American conservative patriots here. Like right. this is what they want. And I realized years ago, if I could put together an organization that recruited guys like Jeremy Mansfield, as you mentioned, these red blooded, you know, God fearing patriots, if I could talk these folks into running and being part of government, we could change our government around here locally and put in some of these these great patriots and really execute the will of the people, which based on voter data, they want a constitutional conservative Republican in, in office. And that's what we're here to give them. Yeah. Um, eight Republican uh, commissioners were defeated um, in May 22 uh, primary by challengers aligned with the constitutional Republicans. Helping to fuel the group's rise uh, were two pop uh, two property tax increases approved by the county commission over the past two decades or so. So here they are, mm -hmm. out spending money. They're raising uh, taxes on the on the property owners, probably doing other things as well. And people finally said, "Hey, okay, we've had enough of it. We got some people who said they're going to do this. They're going to bring change." So they voted for it for these people. That's right. A 42% tax increase over $400 million in debt. You know, we ran and said, we've got people that want to go a different route. We want to cut taxes. We want to cut spending. Right. And we said, listen, if you want to vote for our candidates, this is what they're going to run on. If you don't, that's okay. These are what we stand for. If not vote for the others. And overwhelmingly when voters are given a chance to, to vote for SCCR endorsed candidates, they vote, you know, 75% of the time they're choosing our, our, our folks. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's why it's because 42% property tax increases. Yeah. Uh, that, and, that hits working people hard. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know, uh, how many of those people here where I'm from, you know, you have a county tax, and then if you live in the city limits, you also have the city tax. And yeah. um, so you're getting, a lot of times you're getting a double whammy. You get the county tax increase and then you get the yeah. city property tax increase. And then you have utility increases and everything. People's just sick of it. Yeah. You get a 42% tax increase, $400 million in debt. And then you get a school board that says, Hey, we're going to inject your school with a bunch of woke 
you know, CRT garbage for, you know, eight year olds so that they can, they can read this vulgar stuff. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And it was, it was so apparent to us, Charles, we did something that most people don't do in elections. And that's, we ran a write in. So we had a candidate who, who they kicked off the ballot because they said he wasn't bona fide. And we ran him as a write in against a bona fide Republican his last name is Teachener, and we beat her 70 to 30 as wow. a write-in. So it's it's overwhelmingly evident what these people want here. And the SCCR, you know, will continue to find, recruit, train, and convince God-fearing constitutional conservative patriots to run. And we've already taken over the commission. We have a lot of the city boards. Some we're, we're still working on school board. We we put four people on the school board. That's not enough. We've got elections next year for school board, and we are full speed ahead to flip that board. Yep, that's fantastic, and and that's one of the things that we're seeing out of the out of the uh, Republican Party at the state level and stuff is they're going they're they're going after candidates, uh, especially uh, folks that have moved here and said. Hey, I'm going to get involved. I'm going to run for office. And then they're right. using that to keep them off the ballot. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's just people that have moved here and seen what has already happened, where they've come from. And then want, right. wanting to make sure where they're invested their money now that it doesn't go that way. Now here yeah. in Tennessee, the sad part is many of the people who have been in Tennessee for decades, or their whole life think that this is a strong Republican state and it's very conservative and it's not. Right. I mean, Californians move here and they say to me, Kurt, wait a second. I I did research, but now it's like, where did I move to? I thought this was like super red blooded, diehard constitutional conservative Republican state. It's not. And I said, I, I realize that, but you know what the good news is? You came at the right time. We need your help. Right. You bring a lot of experience. Yeah, we're going to have to get around some of this bona fide stuff, you know, in the meantime. But I'll tell you what, we are we are on a path to, to make real change. We've had a lot of success, and we're not taking our foot off the throttle. And with, with these people that are moving here that are the conservative types, they're going to help us take back this state, Charles. Yes. Yeah. And I'm thankful. You know, and, and we've got a lot of work to do and um, a lot of mobilizing and hopefully um, with what you all are doing and, you know, me trying to share stories across the state of what's going on will help. Yeah. Um, one of the things I like about this here is we exist to smoke out these rhino crats. And, and so, you know, that's that's the job that, that your organization is doing, your group is doing, is not just showing up on election day and voting for the person that you see that's got the best looking signs or or got the most signs for the ones that you got the most mailers out. It sounds like to me that you guys are paying attention to voting records and everything and exposing these people during the election process. Yeah. Well, you know, what we've done is, if you think about it this way, um, we've built a brand. And most people, they're not going to go out and they're not going to write a check to a candidate. They're not going to knock a door. They're not going to make phone calls, right? They're they're not going to give money. They're just not going to do a lot at election time. But let me tell you what they will do. If they're confident that there's an organization that's really doing their homework on these on these candidates – they what I can count on them to do is on election day, they're going to go vote and they're going to they're going to go to our website. They're going to go to our Facebook. They're going to text us, call us. Hey, I'm going to vote. Who do I vote for? And our brand now is so recognized across Sumner County at election time that if we say vote for Billy, people are going to go vote in droves for Billy. And I think that wielding that power and the ability to to change our community is and creating the brand that's what's really going to help us continue not only change Sumner County, but we believe we're going to help change the state too. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when people, when people start to notice 
and they notice that you put the work in and that you're doing your homework and stuff, they will ask you. And I, I get it, uh, you know, quite often. Who, who do I need to vote for? Yeah. Um, this is, I live in this district. Uh, who do I need to vote for? Who's running yeah. for my, you know, and it's, sure. it's, it's sad that it comes to that way that people are asking you who to vote for, but you know what? A lot of people are busy and we know that, and that's how they take advantage of a lot of this stuff. And, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, and so that's how they've, they've done the things that they've done over the years and got by with it and everything. So, uh, but you know, I, I, I seen this article. Or- in, or in, Charles, they, they get a mailer in the mail and they go, oh, this guy's a conservative. I'll vote for him. They don't know the difference. You oh, know? Yeah. He's, uh, mean, he took a picture out in a cornfield uh, with a with a shotgun and a blaze orange vest as a dove hunter, and he supports the Second Amendment. You know? That's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we've all seen it. And yet we look and see what's getting ready to take place in nashville if we don't uh right and that's why we need these third party organizations like what we're doing charles to really get in behind the scenes and say okay i know i know you got a mailer in your house but let us let us go through the process i mean who's running we're running background checks i mean we've hired private investigators we're really interested to find out are these people who they say they are and we're finding a lot of times they're not and um, we need more of what I think what we're doing here in Sumner County to percolate across the state. And I think if, if we can do that, we can smoke out these rhino crats for sure. Yes. And uh, one thing that I seen uh, back last year <clears throat> out of South Carolina was, um, you know, one of the Republic, I mean, uh, Democratic activists down there talking about getting involved in Republican party t- uh, politics you have to go, you have to start uh, going to their meetings and trying to get on the ballot and, and yeah. running a Republican to cause problems. That's yeah. what they're doing. And a lot of people don't realize it. That's what they're doing. And when, when people start looking into them and saying, okay, this is their voting record, or even if they're not, if they're just a new candidate and you get yeah. to look at, it, okay, they're friends with who they run around with who, you can't run around with people like that all the time and not have the same ideology. Uh, yeah. they, you know, Charles, you hit that nail on the head. That's something we talk about very often is that, you know, show me somebody's friends and I'll show you who they really are, you know, right. for sure. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, when, when you hear these people say, Oh yeah, I remember him and uh, I know so-and-so and, yeah, they're friends with them and they do a lot together, but he's really a good guy. Yeah. Uh, I believe our parents used to tell us, uh, you'll be known with the crowd that you run with. That's right. You know, so anyway, so you know, as I said, when I seen this article and, and it was, it, it just really just blew me away that I'm sitting there, um, scrolling through the news and I see this article from Sumner County, Tennessee. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, wow, this is Kurt's uh, group down here. And then they're stirring some things up. And, and as an activist, that made me happy. And that's when I, I uh, text you and I said, Hey man, I gotta have you yeah. back home. Dude, Charles, we, we've got some rabble rousers here. We've got some people that have said, you know what? I either moved here, grew up here. And like you, you said a bunch on this, this podcast tonight, people are sick of it and right. you know, they're standing up and, you know, we, we've had meetings where we've got 120, 25, 30 people show up, you know, Riley Gaines came and spoke at our meeting, wow. right? She lives right here in Sumner County. You know, so she's obviously a, a big supporter of of what we're doing, and we're a big supporter of what she's doing. Obviously, with her 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 fight for this this transgender movement and everything that she's went through. We've got Alan West coming later in November to speak. Uh, so yeah, man, we're gonna keep shaking it up over here. And um, you know, thank you again for having us on the podcast to talk about this, get our message out. Anybody wants to come visit, come visit Charles. We'd love to have you. We'd love to, you know, tell anybody, 
how we do things and some secrets we've learned. If we can help anybody in their counties across Tennessee to build what we've built, we're happy to do that too. Yeah. And well, and that's great because I'm, I'm seeing it a lot a lot of local organizations are, prop, are popping up. They may be, be may be different names. I, I see yeah. in, in power severe, uh, severe County in power, Jefferson County, uh, a lot of different groups. And a lot of people are getting involved. I know in July um, in Jefferson County, we have Gary Humble from Tennessee stands. Yeah, uh, Gary. Uh, um, uh, Brandon Lewis from the Tennessee conservative news. And some of those folks are coming up to Brandon's speak. come, by the way, Brandon's coming next month to speak at, at, for our group, at our group. So we're really excited about Brandon. The, we've got some people that's it's leading here and it's pushing the conservative the agenda, not the Republican agenda. The right, conservative yeah. agenda. And uh, uh, thinking constitutional and everything. And that's great. And that's what we need. And the GOP and the establishment, uh, let me say the uniparty the establishment go. are scared yep. to death. Oh, and that's why scared. you're starting to see you're starting to see legislation in Nashville trying to rein in some of the grassroots activity. Yeah, we're actually running a, a candidate for state senate here in our county uh, against Farrell Hale. Farrell Hale is the sitting uh, pro temp senator here from Sumner County. And we've got a great candidate and Chris Spencer, great conservative patriot that, uh, you know, would be running next year. Uh, and we're hoping to defeat Farrell Hale and, and turn this County even more red. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, I'll share some information with you when we finish this up. Uh, I don't want to go live with it yet, but, uh, uh, I'll, I'll share some information on, uh, with you on uh, something we got plan for October. So, um, okay. um, anyway, but, uh, well, we've been going here probably a little over 30 minutes, so, uh, we'll finish this up. I know you got uh, a big week planned and stuff. So, uh, yeah. will this, uh, anything you want to say before we, uh, finish this? No, I just thank you for your time. Thank you for doing the podcast. Thank you for everything you do from East Tennessee to West Tennessee in the fight, having great people on, getting the message out and helping patriots all across the state. So thank you, Charles. Yeah, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. And my my goal is to keep uh, informing people and letting them know what's going on across the state in state politics and in at the local level, just like in Sumner County in Jefferson County and Hamlin County or wherever. So yeah. I thank you for joining me. Keep up the good work. You guys are doing a fantastic job down there and uh, a model for a lot of other places. And I hope people will reach out to you. Give your uh, contact information in case someone does want to. You go to the website, sccrtn.org. Everything starts there. Our Facebook's there. If you go there, you can find our contact. You can find our email. You can find our Facebook. That's the best way to contact us through that. Yeah. And folks, if you want a model to, to, uh, to get started in your county or your local city or whatever to start changing some things, reach out to Kirk and, and see what these guys are doing. Uh, it may not fit exactly what you need but they can give you something to get you started and, absolutely and you and you can mold it to fit fit your needs how you know it's adaptable so it's not a centralized we call it decentralized right we don't want a central authority we want decentralized you do what's best for you you know in your county so absolutely all right uh kirk thank you for joining me uh it's uh, great having you on and hearing the successes that you all are doing or having and it's great so with that i say god bless everyone thank you for for watching this and and share this information uh we get beat down a lot in in what we're doing and share this information to let people know hey there are some positive things going on in local government and uh, uh at the state level people are fighting back and they're winning not, they're not just fighting back, they're winning. And share that, and maybe it will inspire people to get involved. With that, I say thank you. Have a great day, and we'll see you again on the next podcast. Bye-bye.